Tim, one of the significant decisions that the Miami Dolphins will have to make this offseason involves their quarterback. But we've stayed in touch with his agent, um, had good conversations throughout the year. Uh, we're we're going to simmer on this um, and see what we can do to get better from it uh, going into next year. This year was a crucial big picture season for Tua Tagovailoa and the Miami Dolphins. Since drafting the former Alabama star fifth overall in the 2020 NFL Draft, Miami had climbed out of their stretch of losing seasons to become relevant in their division and in the AFC playoff picture. In 2022, a new head coach and star wide receiver helped push the Miami Dolphins back into the postseason, which set up massive expectations in 2023. Tua overcame serious injury concerns that plagued him in years past to have a career year and get the Miami Dolphins back into the playoffs. But a late season collapse cost them the division, forcing them to hit the road where their championship hopes wilted away in the freezing cold. Now the Miami Dolphins have a huge decision to make as they analyze their quarterback's role and their late season failures. Miami will have to decide whether or not to give Tua a new contract and if so, what those terms would be. This decision and future negotiations will have massive ramifications for the rest of the roster and ultimately the future of the franchise and the Mike McDaniel, Tua Tagovailoa, and Tyreek Hill era. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We're making a huge 900,000 subscribers. And now that we get all that out of the way, work. We made $1,100 off of a $20 entry on prize picks. And it wasn't just me, it was everyone that followed these picks on my Instagram story. And the best feeling is the amount of people that made money as a result of this. I mean, bam, bam, bam. Bam! My DMs were flooded, so the best part for me was seeing you guys make money as well. But we're not done yet. If you haven't signed up for prize picks, use my promo code microphone to double your deposit up until $100 on prize picks. And I give away my picks on a daily basis for free on my Instagram story and now my Snapchat story. We're having so much fun doing this. I'm so happy that I made you guys some money. And thank you, prize picks, for the sponsor. Mike Chuck 1212. What's going on, everybody? Two and the Dolphins offense began the 2023 three season clicking on all cylinders. He torched the LA Chargers with 466 passing yards, 211 of them being to Tyreek Hill in a week one victory. After putting away the division rival Patriots in week two, Miami put the league on notice with a historic week three at home against the Denver Broncos. The Dolphins scored 10 offensive touchdowns, becoming the third team to ever score 70 points in a regular season game and the first since 1966. Tua had a nearly flawless game, 23 of 26 for 300 109 passing yards with four touchdowns and no interceptions with a nearly perfect quarterback rating as they blew out the Denver Broncos by 50 points. Tua appeared to be ahead of the pack in the MVP conversation, with the Miami Dolphins humming through a 3-0 start. But this is where we would get our very first sign of trouble. A week later, after trading touchdowns early, Miami's offense couldn't keep up with the division rival Buffalo Bills as Josh Allen thoroughly outplayed Tua in a 48-20 blowout. Miami came home for the next two weeks as to stabilize the offense against the New York Giants and the Carolina Panthers in double-digit wins. But they hit the road again, where similar problems doomed them in Week 7 on Sunday Night Football. The Dolphins' offense only reached the end zone once against an Eagles defense that was one of the worst in the entire league. The Dolphins kept it close for most of the game, thanks in part to a pick six from their defense, but they ultimately lost by 14 as they fell to 5-2. Once again, they got back on track at home against New England as two or three for 324 passing yards and three touchdowns in a convincing 31 to 17 victory. But again, once they left the comforts of South Florida, the Miami Dolphins would run into trouble. This time, it would be overseas. Playing the Kansas City Chiefs in Germany, Miami was shut out in a horrific first half. They trailed 21 to nothing at the break with the last touchdown coming off of a Tyreek Hill fumble that Kansas City took back 59 yards for a score right before the half. The Dolphins got back in the game in the third quarter when Tua hooked up with Cedric Wilson for a 31-yard touchdown and scored another touchdown on a short field after a Kansas City Chiefs fumble. Down seven with a chance to tie the game, the Dolphins offense got to the Chiefs 31-yard line with just over a minute left. Facing fourth down with the game on the line, Tua fumbled the snap, snuffing out their hopes without even getting the pass off and the Dolphins lost 21-14. After the game, Tua put the mistake on himself. The last play of the game, 
I mean, I'm always going to blame myself. I, I you know, I, I got to catch the ball. Um, so whether that's getting in a, in a better position to catch it or whatever it is, uh, can't end the game like that uh, when we have an opportunity like that against a really good team. That loss dropped Miami to 6-3 and three entering their bye week, and the offense didn't exactly turn it around right away when they came home. Miami came out sluggish against the Las Vegas Raiders, with Tua fumbling on their first possession. He appeared to stabilize the offense with a long touchdown to Tyreek Hill, but a turnover on downs and another fumble kept Las Vegas close at halftime. An interception on the first play of the second half didn't help either. Thankfully, their defense helped salt the game away by shutting out the Raiders in the second half. An end zone interception from Jalen and Ramsey sealed the deal and the Dolphins held on for a 20-13 victory and improved to 5-0 at home. The next two weeks were cakewalks. Although Tua threw interceptions on back-to-back -back drives, including a pick six, and lost another fumble on a botched handoff, Tua gave his surging defense plenty of help against the Jets winning 34-13 on Black Friday. Next week at Washington, Tua found Tyreek Hill for a pair of long touchdowns as they torched the commander's poorest defense in a 45-15 route. Tua was nearly perfect in the victory which moved the Dolphins to 9-3, a record that they hadn't owned since 2001. Plus, they had opened up a sizable lead in the division standings. The New England Patriots were a mess. The New York Jets were toast once Aaron Rodgers went down, and the Buffalo Bills were 6-6, six and, six, and on the verge of falling out of the playoffs altogether. The Miami Dolphins were on top of the AFC playoff picture with control of their own destiny, but their next game would permanently alter their season for the worst. Boasting a perfect home record, the Dolphins welcomed in the 4-8 Tennessee Titans on Monday Night Football, who were starting rookie quarterback Will Levis. On Miami's opening drive, Tua fumbled away yet another snap on the Titans' two-yard line. Luckily for them, the defense responded with a quick five-yard pick six for the game's first score, but the Dolphins' offense was shut out in the first half as Tyreek Hill spent much of it on the sideline after injuring his ankle in the first quarter. They eventually hit a pair of field goals in the second half before a muffed punt set up the Dolphins in the red zone where Raheem Mostert cashed in on a short touchdown run. A bad pitch on the Titans' next offensive snap set Miami up once again in the red zone, and once again Mostert punched it in for a two-touchdown lead with four and a half minutes left. But then, disaster would strike. And this time, it wasn't only on the offensive side of the ball, it was on both sides of the ball. Tennessee drove 75 yards down the field in less than two minutes, scoring a touchdown and a two-point conversion to get within six points with 2.40 to go. With the ball and a chance to put the game away, Miami went three and out. In 26 seconds, the Titans went back back down the field and took the lead with a touchdown and extra point. Still, Miami got the ball back again with the chance to win, but they couldn't even get 20 yards down the field, and a sack on fourth down sealed their fate as they lost their first home game by a point. Tua, who threw a touchdown in 21 straight games, was kept out of the end zone. It was the first win for a team down 14 with under three minutes left since 2016, which you might have guessed looking at the win probability chart. They quickly moved past that setback, blanking the Jets 30 to nothing in a game where Tua only had three incompletions, even without Tyreek Hill. But with Tyreek Hill back in the lineup against Dallas next week, the Miami Dolphins finally gave us a statement victory, finally beating a team with a winning record. But even with Tyreek Hill back in the lineup, they only scored one touchdown, but a late 12-play drive would set up a game-winning field goal, which secured a 22-20 victory as Miami clinched a playoff spot. The division title was in their sights before disaster struck. The Dolphins were outclassed in every way in Baltimore. Lamar Jackson was perfect, while Tua looked anything but, throwing two interceptions as the Ravens clinched the one seed with a 56-19 blowout. That set up their season finale against Buffalo, in which was surprisingly the AFC East Championship game. While the Dolphins were slipping, the Bills had been surging on a four-game winning streak. Still, Miami held a 14-7 lead in the fourth quarter, thanks to a pair of long touchdown drives in the second quarter, but a Bills 96-yard punt return touchdown tied the game and flipped the script. Miami went three and out, and Buffalo responded with a go-ahead touchdown drive. Dolphins had the ball in the last two minutes with a shot to tie it, but Tua got picked off for the second time as Miami got shut out in the second half, officially blowing the division, losing 21-14. As devastating as losing the division was, the Dolphins still had a chance to shake off their disappointment when they traveled to Kansas City for their wildcard playoff game. And this is where the Miami Dolphins preparation was a little confusing. Even though they were facing the Kansas City Chiefs in historically cold weather, I mean, we're talking 
seeing Andy Reid's mustache freezing up in the middle of the game cold weather, the Dolphins still practiced in Miami in the week leading up to the game. Once they got to Kansas City, their offense looked like a shell of its former self. Outside of a 53-yard touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill, the Dolphins were lifeless. They were 1-12 on third down and didn't run a single play in the red zone. In a game that felt over at the end of the third quarter, the Chiefs handled Miami with little resistance, winning 26-7. The cold clearly affected this warm weather team, as Tua admitted after the game. Um, yeah, it, it was a... Uh... It was a little difficult uh, in the beginning, uh, but then we, we sort of figured out a plan with, with how uh, we went about that uh, later on within the game. But uh, yeah, it, it was different. With Detroit's wild card victory over the Rams, the Dolphins now have the NFL's longest active playoff win drought. Tua led the league in passing yards, Tyreek Hill led the league in receiving yards, and tied for the lead in receiving touchdowns. Jalen Waddle had a third consecutive season with over 1,000 receiving yards. Raheem Mostert had a historic season for his age with 1,000 rushing yards and a league leading 18 touchdown runs. Rookie Devon Achan blossomed with 800 rushing yards on almost 8 yards per carry. They led the league averaging over 400 yards per game and finished second in scoring, but they came up woefully short almost every time the stakes were raised or the competition was better. And this included the playoffs. The Miami Dolphins went 1-6 against teams with winning records. Yes, they had a series of season-ending injuries on defense throughout the season, but so did the Buffalo Bills who caught and then surpassed them to win their fourth consecutive division title. Miami's offense completely faded at the end of the season, calling Tua's play into question. He had hadn't exactly played his best football down the stretch, and his playoff numbers even looked bad next to Skylar Thompson, a seventh round rookie who started their playoff game last year in Buffalo with Tua out. This development has set the stage to force the organization to make a difficult choice in the coming months. You see, the Miami Dolphins are in a spot where they have to show their cards on how they view their quarterback. Picking up his fifth year option last year is certainly a vote of confidence, but it's far from a long term commitment. The fifth year on his rookie contract gives him a fully guaranteed salary of about $23.17 million for the upcoming season. Technically, Miami doesn't even have to do anything and let him play out the season on his fifth year option, but that would certainly speak volumes, especially when considering the extensions of the other quarterbacks in Tua's draft class. Jalen Hurts, who was a 2020 second round pick, signed a five year extension for $255 million after leading the Eagles to the Super Bowl. That puts his average annual value at $51 million, which at the time was the largest in NFL history. Right before training camp, Justin Herbert, the sixth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, topped that by signing a five-year extension worth $262.5 million. His average annual value was $52.5 million, topping both Hertz and Lamar Jackson, who signed his new deal after Hertz. Right before the season, Joe Burrow, the first pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, topped all of them with a five-year contract extension for $275 million, giving him a record average annual value of $55 million a year. These are the numbers hanging in the background of any negotiation between Tua and the Dolphins. Can no longer build their team with the QB on a rookie deal if they commit to him and give him a contract that's comparable to his fellow 2020 NFL draft class QBs. As of right now, his salary next season isn't even half of any of those deals. If Miami doesn't want to pay Tua a number close to or over $50 million a season, trading him seems like a plausible option. After playing in every game and leading the league in passing yards, Miami would likely get someone to fight with an offer. But this might be the only chance for the Dolphins to move him with multiple quality offers. Whoever trades for him would have to be willing to give up draft capital to acquire him and then sign a long-term extension once they have him. Not to mention being comfortable with his injury history from previous seasons. Essentially, the Dolphins would be offering the starter whose new team can negotiate their own deal with him rather than inherit a deal that they didn't make. Trading him next year with an extension already attached to him limits his appeal. Ask the Rams about when they traded Jared Goff to the Detroit Lions. Do you remember what they had to do to get Matthew Stafford on this roster? They had to give up a former number one overall pick that recently just beat LA Rams, by the way, in the playoffs. A 2022 first round pick, a 2023 first round pick, and a 2021 third round pick. Or what about the Eagles when they traded the very next pick in the same draft, Carson Wentz? If the Dolphins viewed Tua the way those teams viewed their starters at the time, then now is the time to move on. That's especially true if the Dolphins like one of the numerous first round worthy QBs in the 2020s.
2024 draft. The successes of rookie CJ Stroud and first year starter Jordan Love give credence to the belief that a young QB can succeed right away when surrounded by the right weapons and coaching staff. Going down this road would indicate the Dolphins believe in Mike McDaniel, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and their running backs more than Tua. For their part, the Dolphins have publicly expressed a desire to keep Tua in Miami, as Chris Greer told reporters after the season. No, we've had uh, conversations like we said we wouldn't talk with, you know, throughout the season uh, in terms of contract stuff, but we've stayed in touch with his agent, um, had good conversations throughout the year. Um, never talking about money or anything, just good conversations about, you know, where he is and the relationship with Mike and the team here and everything he's done. And, you know, so the goal is to have him here uh, long term playing at a high level. So, you know, that's always the goal. And um, we'll continue and we'll communicate with him through the offseason here. And last summer, Tua said he hadn't spoken with the team about his contract since they picked up his fifth year option, which he said he was fine with. Even after the playoff loss, Tua didn't seem too worried about upcoming negotiations. I don't feel any pressure at all. Um, I, I I have full trust in in myself. I have full trust in in um, you know what what I'm I'm capable of doing for our organization. Um, but outside of that, we're focusing on tonight and what happened. You know, we're we're gonna simmer on this um, and see what we can do to get better from it uh, going into next year. Regardless of what happens with Tua this offseason, the Dolphins may have to make significant changes to the rest of their roster. They're more than $40 million over the salary cap, with multiple defensive starters hitting free agency. However, their contract decision with Tua will have a massive impact on how they address those impending free agents and their draft strategy. Moving forward financially, the Dolphins aren't in a position to kick the can down the road with the franchise tag, which essentially amounts to a massive one-year extension. In other words, it's now or never. Either the Miami Dolphins make a massive commitment to Tua Tagovailoa as their starter for the next four to five years, or we may have seen Tua's final snaps with the Miami Dolphins. If you're a Miami Dolphins fan, let me know in the comment section down below. What should the Miami Dolphins decide? Should they move forward with Tua as their starter, or should they look elsewhere for their signal caller? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.